let's get started um okay guys so let's just talk about what we spoke about yesterday just get a little bit of a recap and a, and a sort of understanding about what we what we went through yesterday so you guys would remember we started off talking about and i'm just going to put the slides up while i describe it we started off talking about accounting profit and taxable profit right we were saying like these two things are very different and in order to calculate income tax we must always multiply income tax or, or the tax rate by accounting um, sorry by taxable profits and we never 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 take accounting profit or profit before tax multiplied by the tax rate right and so i told you if you were taught that in the past you need to unlearn that and totally forget that because that is very wrong and is not going to get you any marks so going forward we want to take tax taxable profit <clears throat> multiplied by the tax rate in order to get the income tax amount right and our job in this learning area is going to be to convert our accounting profit or profit before tax to convert it into taxable profit okay that's our main job um, and and so in 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 us doing that job you remember we said that there are two types of differences between taxable profits and accounting profits, right? We said they're permanent differences or differences that will never disappear, never go away. Um, and then we can also have temporary differences, okay? Just give me a thumbs up if, if everyone's still on track and you remember sort of what we went through um, yesterday. And if you, have, if you have any questions, guys, then just make sure that you, that you tell me what, what your questions are, okay? Um, and so you guys would remember this diagram or this um, uh, template. Um, uh, and I also just, guys, just while I'm, while I'm here and while I remember, I just also wanted to direct you to a complete template. When I say a complete template, um, the authors of the textbook have basically filled out every possibility, right? Every possible entry that you can have and that's on page 269 at the top of the page so you'll see they've got a very similar uh, thing to what i've got here they've got uh, profit before tax or taxable uh, or accounting profit and then they've got permanent differences and they've got all the various types of permanent differences that you can have and then they've got um temporary differences and then all the various types of temporary differences that you can have so i think that's a good starting point it's a good template for you to start on i'll just put it um in the chat so it's page uh page two six nine all right so i want you to to look at that for for a complete template right we we don't have everything in this in our template yet because as we learn new things we're going to start adding it and eventually by the end of tax our template will look like their template okay by the end of this section um tax will we'll have a full template okay cool so so that was what we chatted about yesterday you'll remember towards the end of the lecture we spoke a little bit about how the tax man works and we said that he's a bit of, bit of a schizophrenic um he might even be a psychopath we don't know yet but, but he's a bit of a schizophrenic and he uses both a uh, cash basis and an accrual basis right so he uses both basis um, in, in preparation of of the taxable profit and so when what we need to do is we also need to try and be a little bit like he is and and, and use the the method that he uses to prepare taxable profit and so we said that's what we'll mainly be doing in the section okay so when we look at, lec at at our content for lecture two, I just want to quickly go through a few um, terms that we might have come through, we might have might have uh, come across so far, and just make sure that we're all on the same page with regard to the terms. The first is taxable uh, profit before tax, right? So profit before tax, we are going to start to call it accounting profit, right? Profit before tax is what we're going to call accounting profit, right? And remember, with the accounting profit, we compile or, or create that amount by applying IFRS, right? Um, then we've got this totally different amount called taxable profit, right? And taxable profit, we create, um, we create that amount by applying the Tax Act, 
okay? Then income tax, which is very different. Sometimes it's also called current tax, right? Income tax can also be called current tax. So uh, income tax is the product of us multiplying taxable profit by the applicable tax rate, okay? And then the last is year of assessment. Now in accounting, we would normally say the, the period or, or the year or the financial year. Uh, in tax, the, the same thing, they, the, the financial year, they call it the year of assessment. Okay, so you'll hear me talking about the year of assessment. You just need to know it means the financial year. Um, for, for companies, the financial year and the year of assessment is always the same, right? It's always the same. So for example, if we have a company that has a financial year from 1 January to 31 December, then his year of assessment will always be 1 January to, to 31 December. Um, if you have a company that has, uh, let's say, 1 July to, to 30 June, then his year of assessment is 1 July to 30 June, right? So, so it depends on what the company's financial year is, and that would be his year of assessment. However, for humans, so for you and I, our SARS tells us what our year of assessment is going to be. And SARS says your year of assessment is going to be 1 March to 28 February, right? Regardless of how you, uh, um, how you plan, that's your year of assessment. So for individuals, we don't have an option, but for, for companies, the financial year and the year of, the se of assessment is the same. Okay, any questions so far about the terms, right? Um, can I just say something now? Uh, a lot of students might be struggling or getting confused between these two terms, right? So, so you just got to remember that income tax um, income tax is the product of taxable profit multiplied by the tax rate, okay? Income tax expense is the product, right? Okay, cool. Right, now you guys would um, remember the slide from yesterday, right? And remember this slide is talking about permanent differences, right? So only permanent differences are on the slide. We, there's no temporary differences here yet right we're going to talk about temporary differences today but but i just want to um reiterate when we've got an exempt income right it means that we have included that income in our accounting profit right but for tax purposes we are not allowed to include that income or that income is not taxable it's exempt from tax right and so then what we need to do is we need to subtract the income Right? And remember, just, just remember, guys, that I said a lot of people are getting confused with this idea of subtracting income, right? And, and just by the way, um, can anyone give me an example of one, of one exempt income that we spoke about yesterday? You guys might remember we spoke about one exempt income yesterday, and we said that that exempt income is something that has already been taxed. And so, therefore, we can't tax it again. That's it, correct, yeah, dividend. So dividends is, um, dividends income, correct, yeah, dividends income, not dividends paid. Dividends income is a type of um, exempt income that has already been taxed, right? And therefore, we are not able or we won't be able to tax it again, right? And so what we need to do is we need to take accounting profit, subtract the dividends income in order to get to taxable profit. Um, we also then briefly chatted about non-deductible expenses. Now, this is important. Remember, these are permanent differences, right? So they never go away. They're permanent differences. Um, and, and I want you to, to think about this and remember this, because when we start talking about temporary differences, I don't want you to get confused between, for example, non-deductible expenses and some expenses that might arrive and, and we might start talking about in, in temporary differences. They're totally different things. Right. And so non-deductible expenses we gave uh, or the examples that I gave you were like uh, fines or penalties or anything that, for example, maybe we did something wrong uh, in our in our tax returns and we might got a, might have got interest from SARS. Um, those types of uh, expenses, we would deduct it from an accounting perspective. We'd say, listen, this is an expense that I have incurred in this year. Therefore, I must reduce my profit by this expense, right? 
But the tax man says, no, I'm not going to allow that. And the reason why I'm not going to allow it is because your company should have not gotten this, ta this uh, fine because you are actually not supposed to have incurred fines. And so what we do to move from accounting profit to taxable profit, we need to add back that non-deductible expense, right? So we add back the non-deductible expenses. And this can cause confusion because we're talking about expenses and now I'm telling you to add it back, okay? Okay. Um, so the last thing that I just wanted to mention is the effective rate. We said we're going to talk about the effective rate a little bit more later on, but just um, uh, I just want to tell you a little story. So I want you to imagine a shareholder that maybe is not very sharp. He's not very intelligent. He hasn't done business accounting 200. And so he doesn't know how to calculate income tax expense. So what do you think he will do in order to vet that figure, in order to make sure that the figure is right, the income tax expense figure? He might do something that we had did, uh, we might have done last year, right? So last year we would have taken profit before tax, we would have multiplied it by the tax rate, and then we would have said, okay, this is our income tax, right? So he, when he does that, he's gonna say, wait, the amounts don't add up, and, and why don't the amounts add, add up? And that's because we, never apply the tax rate to accounting profit. We always must apply it to taxable profit. And so what that then means is that the rates that he gets or the rates that he thinks that the company has been charged tax on is going to be different, right? Now that rate, that very simplistic rate, you might calculate it by taking tax expense divided by profit for the year or, or profit before tax at least, and that might that is basically the effective rate, right? And so um, um, that's what our, our silly uh, shareholder might do, right? And so with the permanent differences, what you're going to find is that permanent differences affect, permanently affect or change the effective tax rate, okay? So permanent differences permanently change the effective tax rate. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit later when we start doing disclosures, but just keep that in mind that the only things that cause differences in the effective tax rate are permanent differences, not temporary differences. Okay, not temporary differences. And this is what, what we are talking about with um, non-deductible expenses. They're expenses that we're not allowed to deduct for tax purposes, and therefore we need to add the expense back to accounting profit all right, you need to add the expense back to accounting profit to get taxable profit. Okay, um, so that that is is um, uh, non-deductible expenses. I just want to add one more non-deductible expense. Right, remember we said the the non-deductible expenses that we are familiar with might be fines um, and might be you know, the uh, fines and penalties and interest maybe that SARS has has um, charged us. Another one is donations given to an organization that is not a not-for-profit organization. So in South Africa, we have this, this type of company called an NPO or not-profit, non-profit organization. And if you donate to some entity that is not an NPO, you are not allowed to deduct that. Why? Because SAR says, listen, you, you're actually exchanging money to a company or, an, or a person that is supposed to be making money themselves, supposed to be a profit generating themselves. So why are you why are you exchanging this money? I'm not gonna allow that donation as a deduction. Okay. So if if you donate money to a non to, to an entity that's not for profit, no, to an entity that is for profit then you, your, your donation will be declined, okay? So, so that's another, another um, uh, non-deductible expense, a permanent difference. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, cool. So I want to revisit this idea of um, capital gain. Right. So remember, we briefly chatted about it yesterday, and we said capital gains is basically 
Um, it's not a separate tax. It's a tax that is, is, is included within your income tax, right? So it's not like dividends uh, tax. It's not like employee tax and VAT or whatever. It, it, this is a tax uh, that's included within your income tax, right? So it's a part of income tax. And you're going to see how just now it's a part of income tax. Um, and basically, it's the government taxing you on uh, inflation, right? So you bought something for one rand, you now sold it for two rand. Um, so there was an inflationary increase, right, of a, of, 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 of a rand. Um, and, so, and so the government is now saying, okay, I'm going to tax you on that inflationary increase. Um, and the reason why South Africa has income uh, capital gains tax, whereas you find it's not a very popular tax in other countries, right? don't have capital gains tax, um, but South Africa does. And the reason why is because the government has identified there's a lot of wealth, right, in, in the country. It's not necessarily people making income. So it's not salaries that are, that are, that are causing the, the incorrect distribution of wealth. It's, it's generational wealth that, that is, that is, uh, uh, incorrectly distributed. And so as a result, the government likes to tax that generational wealth. And the only way for us to tax that generational wealth is on this uh, capital gain, right? So people buying and selling houses, buying and selling expensive paintings or whatever, you know? So, so, so those, so that's what, that's what a capital gains tax is all about. Um, and how would you calculate a capital gain? You would take the selling price of an object, right? and subtract it from the cost price, right? The, the, the cost price is the, is the price that it costs us to buy it, right? So we would do that, and if that amount, if the selling price is higher than the cost price, we have made a capital gain, right? So now a question you guys are gonna answer for me in the chat. Um, if the selling price is below the cost price, right? Is there, what, what is our capital gain going to be? If the selling price is below the cost price, our capital gain is going to be what amount? Negative zero, right? So, so our 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 um, there is such thing as a capital loss, but we're not going to talk about it just yet. Um, but our our capital gain will be zero. Right. Let's put some. Let's look at some method of calculating it, and maybe it will make a bit more sense to us. Right. So, uh, just don't look at the bottom part of the slide for now. Just look at the top part of the slide, and we'll just talk about the top part of the slide, and then I'll go to the bottom part. Right. So, in accounting, what we would say is we would say, okay, we've made a sale. Right. So the so the selling price or the proceeds on the sale minus the carrying amount. Right. And this Profit on sale is the amount that's going to go into what statement? It's going to go into our statement of profit, loss, and other comprehensive income. Right. So this is the amount, right? This is the amount that's going to go into our stocky. Okay. But if we were to want, or if we wanted to calculate the capital element of this profit, the capital portion of this profit, how would we go about calculating it? We would say the selling price less the cost of purchase, the cost that we, the, the, that we originally paid, right? And this is going to be our capital portion of the profit. Now, this capital portion is included inside here, right? It's already included inside here. Why? Because the carrying amount is, will always be lower than the original cost amount. Okay, so as a result, we will have we will have a, a capital profit. Okay, now I just want to now we can look at the bottom part of the slide. So in back to hundred, the base cost is always going to be equal to cost, right? So we're not going to have a situation. In back to 100, we're not going to have a situation where the base cost is different. Base cost is the tax term or the tax word for original cost. Okay, 
next year when you do um, when you do tax again next year, they are then going to look at situations when the base cost is different. Okay, but for now, for first for second year, we're just going to assume that the tax uh, base cost is always uh, equal to the accounting original cost. Okay, so so the base cost. Um, which is the original cost is going to be um, there. And then we're going to say the profit uh, or, the, or the selling price less the cost is going to give us a capital gain. Now, because these two calculations are exactly the same, right? So the, because base cost is equal to original cost, and we're saying profit before sale minus original cost is going to give us a capital gain. In fact, these capital gain and the capital profit for back 200 only is always going to be equal. Okay. So that makes it a lot easier for us um, going forward. Right. So, so it's always going to be equal. Right. Now, um, we, we spoke yesterday about the inclusion rate. And even in the slide that we just covered now, we said that the inclusion rate for companies is 80%. So 80% inclusion rate. So 80% of this capital gain is going to be included in our taxable profits, right? And then that taxable profit is going to be multiplied by the 28%, right? So a lot of people were getting confused yesterday, and I think they were thinking that we're saying that the tax rate for capital gains is 80%. That's not what we're saying. We're saying we're including 80% of the capital gain in taxable profits. And then whatever your taxable profits are is then going to be multiplied by 28. And that is the tax that you're going to pay. Okay, you're not paying 80% on the capital gain. Does everyone understand that? Okay, so, so that was a, a bit, I think some people were not, were not getting me on that one. But, but um, so, so, so the inclusion rate is 80%. Now, I've got a question for you. If I'm taxing 80%, the other 20% is exempt from tax, right? Does that make sense? So, so how, what is the exempt portion? The exempt portion is going to be 20%. How do we treat? Yeah, so how do we treat the exempt portion? Let's go back to the slide. How do we treat the exempt portion? We said exempt income, so I'm reading on the, on the left-hand side of the slide. Exempt income is not taxable, right? Now, because it's already been included, now think about it. Has the, has the full capital profit been included, right? The full capital profit has been included. Where has it been included? It was included in this portion here called profit on, uh, uh, um, or loss on the sale, right? Therefore, we need to deduct it from accounting profit in order to move closer to, we need to deduct or subtract, we need to deduct or subtract the uh, exempt 20% in order to move closer to taxable profit. Does that, that make sense to everyone? So this 20%, the, the exempt 20%, we're going to see it as a minus, right? You're going to see it as a less uh, on, on your when you're calculating taxable profits, okay? So just keep that in mind. Um, let's do a quick example, right? So let's let's look, because I think sometimes it can get a bit confusing if there's no numbers, right? So let's do a quick example, right? So we say C, C Limited uh, sold a car for 120,000 Rand. Its carrying amount was 80,000 Rand. So we know how we calculate carrying amount. It's going to be costless accumulated depreciation. So therefore, the carrying amount is always going to be less than cost, right? If that makes sense to you guys, because we're going to remove depreciation. Sometimes we might even remove something like impairment or something. So so as a result, the carrying amount is then, uh, we're looking at depreciable assets, the carrying amount is going to be less um, uh, than the cost, right? Everyone happy? Um, and then it says the original cost was 110. So the original cost was 110, um, and and the carrying amount is 80, um, and then and then the next thing that we say here is the base cost is equal to the cost price, which is fine. 
for back to 100, it's always going to be equal. So I'm just going to draw or write here. Can everyone see what I'm writing? All right. So we sold, we sold it for 120. Right. So that's our selling price. Right. We've got uh, um, down here. We've got our carry amount at 80. Right. We've got our carrying amount at 80. I'm going to put a CA for carrying amount. Right. And then in between. We've got what? Cost. Uh, C O S T. Okay. Now, when I'm, can everybody see that? Because it's a bit, it's not bright enough for me, but. Oh, yes. Cost equals 110. Sorry. Uh, it's clear that you can see because you corrected me. There. Cost equals 110. Right. So now, if I go back to the diagram or back to the things that we were just looking at, and we say, um, okay, let's do, let's calculate how much is going to end up in accounting profit, right? So how much is going to end up in accounting profit? We're going to say proceeds on the sale, which is 120, less the carrying amount is going to give us the uh, proceeds on the sale, or the, or the amount or the uh, profit on the sale. All right, so, so let's let's try and do that now. Let's try and do that with a diagram, right? If, if you know what I'm saying, let's look at a diagram and see if we can't um, understand what's going on. So we are moving from 120 to 80, right? We're saying we're saying 120 minus 80. That's correct. We've got a thousand rand. I mean, for 40,000 rand. 120 minus 80, 40,000 is going into Splocky. So can you see that that 40,000 includes the capital profit? Does that make sense to everyone? And how much is that capital profit that it includes? The 40,000 includes capital profit of how much? 110. I mean, 10. What am I saying? <laughs> 10, right? So the first question is, what amount is going to be included in profit and loss? Right? And you guys have already answered, it's going to be 40,000. Right? Then the next question is, how much of the capital gain is taxable? So we're going to take our 10,000 rand, right? Let's go back to our, our diagrams here. We're going to take our 10,000 rand because remember our capital profit and our capital gain will be equal. So it will be 10,000 rand multiplied by 80%, right? It's going to give us 8,000. So 8,000 is going to be the capital gain. Therefore, what is exempt? 200. Yes. There we go. 2,000 is going to be exempt. So when we calculating... And, and so in, in, our, in our calculation, when we're moving from accounting profit to taxable profit, what are we going to be doing? Are we going to be adding 8,000 or, or what are we going to be doing? We're going to be minusing 2,000. And just that minusing of 2,000 is going to encompass all of, this, all of these calculations. Does that make sense to everyone? So the only thing we do is we minus 2,000. But we are, in fact, doing all the other calculations in the background. Does that make sense? Tell me if I've lost you with the 2,000, because it can. I do understand that some people might not understand um, where I'm at. So if you are not, are not uh, there, then you need to let me know, right? I, I, I will never be able to read your mind. OK. So, so. So our capital profit is 10,000 Rand. How did we come with the capital profit? It's because we went from 120, when we're calculating capital profit, we went from 120 to 110, right? So our capital profit is 10,000 Rand. And we are told that 80% of that capital profit, which is 8,000 Rand, must be included in tax, in tax profit or taxable profits, right? So 80%, which is 8,000 Rand, must be included. So 20% is therefore exempt. And that 20% represents an amount of 
2,000 rand. So when we are moving from accounting profit to taxable profit, we're just going to be minusing 2,000 rand. And why are we minusing 2,000 rand? Because it's an exempt income. And based on our rules in this slide here, we subtract or minus exempt income. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. So let's have a look at the actual calculations. I, I feel like we basically did it, but 120, we removed the carrying amount. We got our profit on sale of 40,000. Inside that profit on sale was hiding this 10,000 here, right? So that 10,000 then my, multiplied by 80% by is gonna give us the amount that needs to be taxed. And this amount of 8,000 Rand is going to be included in um, uh, taxable profits. Okay, so it's gonna be included in taxable profits. Everyone happy? Any questions? Anyone lost? Right? Um, so, so that brings us to our, the end of our discussions on permanent differences. Now, the, the next slide, we're going to start talking about temporary differences, guys. So when I start talking about temporary differences, I don't want you to go back to, this, to these rules on this page. Remember, the rules on this page are only, or the rules on this slide, are only applicable to permanent differences. When we start talking about temporary differences, these rules are not important anymore. Okay? Everybody on track. Okay, so let's talk about temporary differences, right? So remember we said there are two types of differences, permanent, which we already discussed, and now temporary. The reason why we call them temporary is because they evaporate or disappear over time, right? They go away over time, right? And for example, we said one of them like is, is maybe depreciation, right? Um, and I'll talk about that just now. So, so basically, when we're talking about temporary differences, um, we're talking about an amount that is both taxable and will be included in taxable profits and will be included in accounting profits. The only problem is it's going to be included in both of these amounts at different times. So it's a timing problem. There's a timing issue here. So for example, we will include depreciation, let's say, um, or an amount of depreciation in year one, but the taxman only includes it in year two. So overall, we've both included it, but we've just included it at different times, right? One in year one, one in year two, for example, right? So th does that make sense? So it's, a, it's the issue here is timing. So we're not at all talking about any exempt income. So from now on, all permanent differences have disappeared. So we're not talking about exempt income. We're actually talking about taxable income, but it's just that we're including it at different times. We're not talking about non-deductible expenses. We're talking about expenses that can be deducted, but the issue is the time is, is different, right? When we include it in, in the amounts are different, okay? Now, there are three broad types of temporary differences. There are three main types of temp temporary differences. The first is, and we chatted about this yesterday, it's because the tax man is a schizophrenic. So he does not know when he wants to, or he does, but he, at times he's, he wants to use the accrual system, and then at other times he wants to start using the cash basis, right? So he, and, and, and he switches and he changes when it suits him or when he wants to, right? He, he, he switches between one and the other when he wants to. All right, and, and, and it's the, yes, exactly, earlier off accrual or cash. And, and um, so this is what the first, causes the first temporary difference, right? The first temporary difference is because of the differences of, of presentation. He will use the cash or accrual basis and we would only use the accrual basis. As accountants, we're only using the accrual basis. And that results in the first type of, of um, difference, or uh, first uh, type of temporary difference. The next type of temporary difference is with regard to depreciation. Now, going forward, we're going to start calling a tax depreciation a different name, right? For ease of reference, we're going to start calling it wear and tear. And the reason why we call it wear and tear is because obviously there's wear and tear on the, on the machinery or the item that we're dealing with. And it also helps us in our mind 
to remember that we're not talking about depreciation, we're talking about tax depreciation in inverted commas. So from, 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 um, for, for accounting purposes, we would depreciate an asset and for, for tax purposes, they would calculate wear and tear. Now the problem is the rates at which they, they, they each depreciate this asset or expense the asset is different, right? So accountants will use a specific rate and the taxman will use a different rate. And because of those, because of the differences in rates, it creates a different time in which we expense the, the asset, right? So we expense it at different times. Uh, one will expense all, let's say in, in four years, the other one will take maybe 10 years to expense the asset. So this is again a, a, a temporary difference because over the 10 years period, they've both included, they've both expensed the asset, but it's just they've done it at different times, okay? So that's the next type of temporary difference. That's a temporary difference arising because of different rates of depreciation, right? Remember the first one was the accrual um, basis and then the taxman uses the cash or accrual basis. Now the last type of temporary difference is, um, is is a so so you know when we make profits right we, so so we we make profits and and the tax man taxes us on those profits and we must now pay the tax man right so so and that's because we made a profit now in the event that we make a loss right the tax man is actually supposed to pay us right because we've made a loss the taxman is actually supposed to pay us the loss that we made multiplied by the tax rate is what he is supposed to pay us right so that is called an assessed loss and unfortunately when that happens the taxman says i'm i don't, I don't like this anymore i'm not going to pay you <laughs> so so can you see what i was saying when it benefits him then he changes what he wants to do if we make a profit then we have to pay him but if we make a loss he's like okay i'm not gonna pay you now <laughs> right i'll pay you later <laughs> so what you find is that the last temporary difference arises because of this thing called assess losses right so what the taxman says is listen you've made a loss now but um because you've made a loss there's a risk that you might become bankrupt and you might actually um your, your company might not exist right um, and i'm not gonna pay you um money for a company that doesn't exist so I will hold this loss as a basically like a credit, like a like a um, like a coupon that you can you can recover uh, in the future when you start making a profit, right? So if you made a, an assessed loss or, or, or a tax loss this year, he says I'm not going to pay you back your tax. I'm going to hold that loss, and then in the future when you start making profits, we can net it off against that loss that you made. Does that make sense to everyone? Right. Can that company not be the reason the company becomes bankrupt? Can that not be the reason? That, yes, that can be the reason because they're not getting money in, but then um, the tax man might say, listen, it's not my job to keep companies operating. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to collect tax on behalf of the government. So I don't care whether you operate or not. But if you make a profit, you're going to pay me. And if you make a loss, I will not pay you. All right. So that's basically what, what the tax man says. So once companies out of business. <laughs> so, um, so basically, that last type of, of uh, temporary difference is where I've made a loss this year. And I say, oh, the tax man owes me. But then the tax man says, no, I don't owe you. And that creates a bit of a temporary difference. But over time, when I start making a profit again, right, if, if my company survives uh, this bad patch and starts making a profit again, then I can start claiming back that loss that I had made, right? So that creates a temporary difference. So if they don't start making, yes, if they don't start making the profit, the taxman will never pay that amount. And that amount um, it just disappears. When the company de it becomes deregistered, then the taxman is no more liable. Right. And, and the reason why he does it is because so many companies that make a loss, right, so many companies that make a loss actually become bankrupt. Right. And I mean, it, that makes sense. If the company is making a loss, it, the company is about to die. Right. 
And so, so many companies that do make a loss, they do become bankrupt. And so the taxman says, I'm not going to keep paying you if you keep, if you're just going to become bankrupt. I don't care. When you make a profit, you can claim it back. Right. So actually, because companies who, yeah. <laughs> okay. So those are the three types of um, uh, temporary differences. Let's just quickly recap. It's the accrual cash issue, right? Then the different rates of depreciation. And then it's because sometimes I make a loss and I think the taxman owes me and he says, no, I don't owe you. All right. So those are the three types of, of um, uh, uh, temporary differences. Now, I just want to quickly talk about uh, allowable deduction. So these are the opposite of non-deductible expenses. These are deduct uh, expenses that are deductible, but they are deductible at the earlier of whether they are incurred or paid. So we're only going to be dealing with with a general deduction for today. Uh, next on Tuesday we'll talk about special deductions or special uh, deductions. Will yeah. So don't worry too much about them. The thing that you need to realize is that it has to be in the production of income, and it's not. It's a non-capital nature except for capital gains tax. And that's why if you have a look at the way the taxman calculates uh, his tax, he has a separate line item for the capital gains tax. And he says, you know, he's gonna include it at 80% here. So, so um, uh, this uh, allowable deductions doesn't include any, any capital element, right? Um, so let's just quickly talk about some of the differences. So we're gonna deal with the first type of temporary difference, uh, that being the accrual uh, the, the, the accrual system issue, right? So for income, um, uh, if we receive income, accountants will include it in the profit if it is earned, right? The taxman will include it earlier of receipt or earned, right? So he says, whichever happens earlier, that's when, when, whenever you get it, that's when I want to tax you, right? So that's, so that's the problem. Um, with, with expenses, the taxman says, okay, oh, where the accountant says, listen, I want to include it whenever it's incurred, right? He says, I want to include it if it's incurred. Then the taxman says, okay, you can include it when it's incurred, unless it's a prepayment, then I think you should include it when you prepay it, right? Then I think you should in, in, include it when you prepay it. Um, and if it's a provision, so, so what's a provision? A provision is if you did something this year, that is going to result in an expense, but the expense is only going to come maybe two or three years time, right? Uh, then you will create a provision and you say, I'm going to provide, I'm going to save up for this expense that I know is coming. I'll give you an example. In South Africa, we have a lot of mining companies, right? And so if a mining company digs a hole in the ground, the mining company knows that in the future, I'm going to need to fill this hole. Right. So what they will do is they will start to provide or save up, right? They will start to save up for that expense because they know in 10, 20 years time when I need to, when there's no more gold in this hole, I need to fill it, right? So they will start to save up uh, or provide for it. And when it comes to that type of expense, the, the uh, and you guys are doing provisions later on in the year. So that's why I just gave you a very brief introduction. You'll do it in more detail later on. But uh, provisions, when it comes to provisions, the taxman says, no, 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 you can't deduct it in the year that you have created the provision. You can only deduct it um, uh, when you pay it, right? So, so again, you see the taxman is, he's like changing what he does based on, on, um, on what we do. Uh, yes, like a lot, yes, we're actually gonna deal with allowances for credit losses. Um, uh, on Tuesday. Okay, we're going to show you because because after much discussion, the taxman has given us a small break of about 20% on allowances for credit losses. But we'll we'll chat about that on Tuesday. So I just want to talk to you about receivables, right? So receivables we sometimes call them debtors. Um, uh, what happens from an accounting perspective? We say okay, if we've earned an amount but we haven't received it, right? So we earn we we, we sold our goods but the customer didn't pay us, we need to include that amount in revenue, right? Which is what we did at the beginning of the year. We say we need to include this amount in revenue, even though I, uh, I, I didn't get paid, I still earned it, right? So I included it in revenue. 
The tax man says, okay, not a problem. You can include it in revenue because I want to tax you on it now, right? He says, I want to tax you on it today. So can you see there's no difference when it comes to receivable? There's no temporary difference. We're both doing the same thing. So our accounting profit and our taxable profit would be the same in the case of a receivable, right? But now let's have a look at income received in advance. So what is income received in advance? I have not earned this income, but someone has already paid me. So I've received it, but I haven't earned it. Right. And so what the accountant will say is, listen, I'm not going to put it in my in my revenue. I'm only going to put it in revenue when it is earned. So I'll keep it in a liability. Um, what happens if the debtor does not pay you back? So so that's what we're going to deal with on Tuesday we're gonna, when we talk about the, the special deductions. Right. Um, so so anyway, let's talk about the income received in advance again. So. Yes, I've received the money, but I haven't earned it. So I'll keep it in a liability until the last time that I have earned it, and then I'll release it into revenue, right? Um, the taxman says, nah, just include it now, right? I want to tax you on it today instead of taxing you on it tomorrow because um, those of you that do FBS, you'll know about the time value of money. Um, so the taxman wants to receive as much money as he can today because the money is more valuable to him today than it is um, tomorrow basically so he wants to try and get as much as he can today out of you so he says no i want you to include it now include it in this year so that creates a temporary difference why is it a temporary difference because over the two-year period both of you would have included this uh, revenue right or both of you would have included this income the problem is that you include it at different times he includes it in year one when it was received and you only include it in year two when you earned it right so so that's so that's the one issue with income let's talk about um uh, expenses so remember we're not talking about non-deductible expenses non-deductible expenses is a permanent difference here we're talking about temporary differences the expenses that can be deducted right so sometimes we uh, do business and we incur um, some sort of expense but we don't pay it when it is incurred what is that called that is called a creditor we can sometimes call that a payable, right? So what happens with that is we say, listen, I've incurred it and I've generated, it, it, it's related to something that happened in this year. So therefore I'm going to include that expense in my profit and loss statement. So I'm going to include the expense in my profit and loss statement, right? Um, the taxman says, okay, fair enough. You have incurred it in the current year and you did create some sort of profit um, from this expense. So therefore, I'm going to allow you to deduct it, right? So in, in, when it comes to payables or creditors, there is no difference, right? There's no difference between what we do and what the taxman does when it comes to uh, uh, the payables. But now let's look at a provision. Remember what I said about a provision? It's an expense that we think is going to come in a, in a long time maybe 10 years or something and so we start saving for it now right and the reason why we start saving for it now is because uh, let's say like a mine a mine is digging a hole they're getting the profits from the gold today but that cost of filling the hole only comes in 10 years time right so what what we do as accountants is we say so this is this provision is technically an expense it's technically a cost uh, that we've incurred to generate this profit, right? So, so the, the profit and this uh, provision is related somewhat. So therefore we record it in the year that, uh, that we've uh, dug the hole, right? Um, so we say, okay, we're going to include uh, provisions. Pension fund is not a provision. Um, we're going to include the provisions. We're going to talk about pension funds when we do employee benefits later on. Then you'll see why it's not a provision. Uh, but, but uh, for example, we can talk about, like I said, rehabilitation of 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 uh, the environment. If you do if you do some sort of business that damages the environment, you might create a rehabilitation for it. Uh, someone else spoke about allowances or provisions for credit losses or allowances for credit losses that is a type of provision. Um, and so we would include that provision 
uh, and, and net it off or reduce our current year's profit by that provision. The taxman says, no, I don't like this. You can only include it when you pay it, right? So that's going to create a temporary difference because over time, we will both have included it. He will, in, he will include it only when I pay it in, in year 10, but I'll include it in year one, two, three, four, five, when I create a, a profit out of it or, or generate income out of it, right? So, so that creates a temporary difference. Then a prepayment is a situation where I have paid someone early, right? So I paid someone early and I say, okay, I can't, I can't include this in my profit before tax. Instead, I'll just keep it as an asset until such time that I do incur it, and then I'll put it into an expense. Uh, the taxman says, no, listen, you must pay me now. And the reason why he, oh, sorry, he says you must deduct it now. The reason why he does this, and, and this can sometimes be counterintuitive to, to students because they say, but sir, I thought you said he only does what benefits him. Uh, you got to understand whoever you paid to, he's telling them on that side to include it. So he is still, for, for him, it's like a net situation. He's not, he's not gaining or losing, but he is telling them to include it and he's telling you to deduct it. So it's okay um, from his perspective. Right, so, so that's gonna create a temporary difference as well. Okay, any questions so far? Does anyone have any questions about what we chatted about? We're gonna do um, an example now. Okay, and then we'll be done. Okay, so D Limited incurred 10,000, so he incurred, D Limited, uh, incurred 10,000 Rand um, for rental for December 20, 2001. However, he only paid this expense in 2002. So if we go back to our diagram, because now we're talking about an expense, if we go back to our, our slide, what type of expense is that? Is that a payable? Is it a provision? Is it a prepayment? Uh, type your answer out in the chat. What type of expense is it? Is it a payable, a provision, or a prepayment? Right. Can you see that? It's a payable. And from the, from the tax perspective, we would be allowed to deduct it. From the accounting perspective, we would also be allowed to deduct it. So there will be actually no differences in the way we treat it, right? So both of us are gonna treat it exactly the same, okay? So that's, so that's what we're saying here. There's no difference. We're both deducting 10,000 rand. Okay, that's the easy one. Let's have a look at another one. So this one says E-Limited paid rent of 10,000 rand on December 31st, 2001 at the year end. But the rental related to January 2002. So we made a prepayment. So if we go back to our slide, it's going to be a prepayment. Right? We've created a prepayment. Now we know that there's going to be a difference, right? So on a prepayment, will the when will the taxman include it? He's going to include it in 2000 and what? Will he include it in 2001 or 2002? Right, so he's going to include it in 2001. So here, we're going to say, okay, he's going to include 10,000 Rand. What are we going to include? We're going to include no. Okay, we're going to include zero. So let's have a look at what that looks like. So remember in 2001, he includes 10,000, we include no. All right. Now, another additional question is what's going to happen in 2002? So in 2002, do you think he's going to include uh, this prepayment? Yes or no? Do you think he's going to include the prepayment? No. Why? Because he's already included it last year, right? He's already included it last year. He doesn't want to, yes, he doesn't want to deduct it again, right? But from an accounting perspective, we will include it. So in 2002, we're going to have 10,000 and he's going to have how much? Zero, right? So it's, can you see that we is it, swapping around? We're doing the opposite of what we did in 2001, right? Now, this is my question, right? And this question, last question for the day. If we were starting with accounting profit, okay, in 2002, if we are starting with accounting profit, what are we going to do to accounting profit 
to get to taxable profit? What are we going to do? Are we going to add or are we going to subtract? All right, can you see what everyone is saying? When, when we have um, a prepayment, right, we're going to add that amount from last year. You, you get what I'm saying? You're going to add the amount from last year, which is 10,000 then coming from 2001. So in 2002, you're adding the 2001 amount. Everybody with me? Why are you adding it? Because our profit has been decreased. Our profit in 2002 has been decreased by 10,000. But the tax man, he said, no, 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 I've already taken this thing to account. So you can't decrease it. So we need to add it back. So we're adding back the last year's balance. You get what I'm saying? Right? Give me a thumbs up if you understand. Or not. Okay. So someone says, please repeat. Right. So in 2001, the tax man uh, included it in taxable profits, but we did not include it right, in our accounting uh, profit before tax. Right? So we didn't include it. He included it in 2001. Right. Okay, so let's do this here. Let's talk about the 2001 calculation, and maybe that will help you. So in 2001, we came up with accounting profit, right? And what were, what are we going to do to that accounting profit in order to make it into taxable profit? Are we going to add the expense, or are we going to subtract the expense? This prepayment, at least. Are we going to add or subtract the prepayment? No, 2001, we did not include it in our profit before tax. We did not include the expense. So in order, in 2001, what are we going to do to our accounting profit to make sure that it gets or equals taxable profit? What are we going to do to the prepaid expense? We're going to subtract it, right? Why? Because it's the earlier of, the tax man includes it the earlier of, um, a receipt or payment. So we had paid it, so he would include it at that earlier date, right? So he would include it in 2001. So we take our accounting profit less the prepayment that we made this year is going to give us taxable profit, right? So that's year one. Now year two, we included it, but he is not going to include it. So then my question was, what do we do to the profit of year two in order to get taxable profit? Then we add it back. Okay, does that does that help? I think I think um, yeah. So in, so in two thousand and one we minus it from from accounting profit, but in two thousand and two we add it to accounting profit. Okay, that's the long and the short of it. Okay, so you add the closing balance in 2001, but you subtract the opening balance in 2002. Does that make sense? Give me a, yeah, okay. Okay, great. Um, cool. I think, I think most people got it. If you didn't get it, I'm going straight into consults now. So you guys can maybe, if you didn't get it, maybe you can um, just ask me a few questions and we can see if we can't um, uh, sort this out between you and I. Okay. Uh, guys, that's the end of our lecture today. Thank you very much. Um, in terms of admin-related stuff, there's nothing much that I wanted to say apart from there's no um, online homework ne uh, tomorrow. No online homework. I mean, next week at least, no online homework. And uh, next week, I expect that you're going to be studying hard. Um, we will have a lecture on Tuesday and then Thursday, but nothing on Friday. But please just study hard. I really do think, like I said for test one, and I was shocked out of my life. Uh, uh, the, I had the biggest shock of my life when I saw the marks. 
but um, I really do think it's not a difficult paper uh, for test two. Okay, so all the best. Let me stop the recording.